We worship the heavenly Father who sits enthroned forever, the Yahweh, Yod He Vav He, the mighty God who nobody created, the one who has been God since before time began, the one who exists and dwells outside time, the one who was here before the beginning began. We worship you, sovereign Lord. We honor you this morning. We bless your name this morning. We magnify your name this morning. You have done it again, Yahweh. We thank you for the miracle of going to bed and waking up. You've done it again, oh God. You've woken us up in power. You've woken us up in victory. You've woken us up in your grace. You've woken us up in your mercy. You've woken us up in your goodness. And for this, we are grateful. We return the glory to you. We return the praise to you. We worship you, Yahweh. We look at ourselves and we see that we are Lord living testimonies. We look at how far you've brought us. We see that we are living testimonies. We look at the great works you have done in our lives and we see that we are testimonies. Yahweh be exalted in the congregation of your children. Yahweh be magnified this morning. Yahweh be praised. Yahweh be honored. Yahweh be reverenced. Our Father who art in heaven, we say, hallowed be your name this morning. Let your name be held in great honor. Let your name be held in great esteem. Let your name be reverenced. Let your name be praised. Let your name be honored. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. You are beautiful for all situations. You are indeed the joy of the whole earth. We bless you, Yahweh. The Bible says in Psalm 113, Psalm 113 from verse 1. It says, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise all servants of the Lord. Praise the name of Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, the name of the Lord is to be praised with all inspired reverence. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory is above the heavens. Who is like Yahweh our God, who is enthroned on high, who humbles himself to regard the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor out of the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap that he may sit them with the princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the barren woman live in the house as a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yahweh, we praise you. According to your word, we praise you. You have humbled yourself this morning to look upon us. You are a God who humbles himself to look upon the affairs of the earth. We are grateful this morning uh, from the rising of the sun uh, we say let your name be praised uh, even to the setting of the same uh, may your great name be exalted uh, for you have done us good lord uh, great things you have done uh, great things you have done and greater works than these shall you do uh, because you are faithful oh god uh, and you remain true to your word. We honor you this morning. Lift up your voices, children of God, and worship him and bless his name. For our God, Yahweh, deserves our praise. We honor him this morning. We bless him. We exalt him. For there is no God to be compared to our God. God. There is none to be compared to the one who is matchless in glory, matchless in splendor, matchless in power, matchless in grace, matchless in righteousness, matchless in goodness. There is none that can be compared to him. We worship him. His name is El Emet, the Lord God of truth, the one who can never lie, who only speaks the truth and whatever he speaks, it comes to pass. What he says, it comes to pass. What he promises is uh, he can do. Uh, this is the God that we are serving. Uh, the one who is faithful. Uh, we worship him this morning. Uh, the one who is called Elohim. Uh, the source of every living thing. Uh, our creator. The one who has the capacity and the power to create. Uh, and he has given us that same capacity. He has given us that capacity to create with our words. Uh, Father we honor you this morning. Uh, we thank you the creator. We exalt your name. Uh, you are faithful uh, and you are worthy of praise. You are worthy of thanks. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy, mighty God. We bless your name this morning. We extol your name for how wonderful is your name. How great is your name. How marvelous is your name. We thank you. The God who is called Jehovah Shalom, our peace. The one who gives us peace in every situation. Peace in every circumstance. Who gives us peace that transcends all understanding. It is in you, Lord, that we put our trust. For you have given us Shalom. Shalom. 
shalom and well-being in every area of our lives. We are thankful this morning. We are thankful to Jehovah Jireh, the great provider, the one who supplies our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. The day has come again and we are thankful that this day, all that we need, you are providing, you have provided for you are Jehovah Jireh. We thank you in advance for meeting the needs of this day. We thank you in advance, oh God, for sending us provision from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and giving us all that we need. Thank you for this is the day that you are releasing our daily bread. And so we thank you, Father. We bless your name today. We honor you, Adonai. We reverence your name. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy. You are worthy. We give you glory, Lord. Oh, we worship you. We magnify your name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. Before we go into our prayers of repentance. In 2 Kings chapter 5, the Bible records the account of prophet Elisha and Gehazi, who was the servant of the man of God. The Bible records that Naaman had come from Syria to look for healing, to look for cleansing from leprosy. And as the word of the Lord was released through the mouth of Elisha, um, Naaman was cleansed in the river Jordan. And after Naaman had been cleansed, the Bible records that Naaman tried to give a gift to Elisha in return for the cleansing. And Elisha refused and said to Naaman, go in peace. And Naaman went. But after Naaman had gone, the Bible says, Gehazi thought that my master, this is in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 20. Gehazi thought, my master has spared this Naaman, the Syrian, by not accepting the gifts that he brought. And he said, as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. So he went and he concocted a story to Naaman and lied that the master had received visitors, two young men of the sons of the prophets, and that he now needed silver and two sets of clothing for the visitors and all this was a lie and of course Naaman gave him two talents of 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 silver gave him the two changes of clothes and Gehazi thought he had won and the bible says when he arrived back home he went to hide what he had taken from Naaman and then Elisha says where have you been Gehazi And Gehazi said, your servant went nowhere. Elisha said, did my heart not go with you when the man turned from his chariot to meet you? Is it a proper time to accept money and clothing and olive orchards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and male and female servants? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and to your descendants forever. Now you can see that Elisha did not create any leprosy anyway to give to Gehazi. He didn't say, I am giving you leprosy because you went behind my back. He just said, because you have received things from Naaman, therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you. In other words, there was a spiritual exchange when Gehazi took the money and he took the clothes in the realm of the spirit. The leprosy of Naaman that was looking for where to go, it found a house in Gehazi and his descendants forever. There was an exchange. Satan is always looking to exchange things for us to give you what you're not supposed to have. But when you take something from him, he has the legal ground to give you that thing that you never bargained for. When Gehazi was going to get the money, when he was going to get the clothes, he did not bargain for leprosy for himself and his descendants forever. This is what the devil does when we break 
the hedge, when we don't listen to the voice of God, when we don't follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit, he will let you take something that you think is beautiful, but in exchange, he will give you what you didn't bargain for. This is the prayer I want us to pray this morning. I want us to use Psalm 51, Psalm 51, Psalm 51 from verses one to verse seven. You are going to personalize that Psalm, Psalm 51 verses one to seven. And as you are praying with that Psalm, I want you to pray and say, Lord, where there's been any exchange in the realm of the spirit because of the doorway of sin, the doorway of transgression, the doorway of iniquity in my bloodline, wherever Lord, sin, transgression, and iniquity has opened a door and there's been an exchange. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion. Blot out my transgressions, O God. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and guilt. Wash my family. Wash my spouse. Wash my children. Wash my children's children. Wash my bloodlines from my father's side from my mother's side. Wash us, O God. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion. Blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our wickedness and guilt. Cleanse us from every sin, for we are conscious of our transgressions and we acknowledge them this morning. Father, on behalf of myself, my spouse, and our bloodlines from our father's side, our mother's side, Lord, every bloodline we are connected to by birth, by marriage, by childbirth. We bring our guilt before you this morning. We acknowledge our transgressions. We acknowledge our wickedness. We acknowledge our sins. Cleanse us from every sin. Wash us, O God. Purify us this morning. Our sin is always before us against you and you only have we sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified when you speak your sentence and you are faultless in your judgment. I was brought forth in a state of iniquity. I was shaped in iniquity. I was shaped in iniquity. In sin, my mother conceived me. I pray for my spouse. I pray for my children. I pray for my bloodlines. Lord, we were shaped in iniquity and in sin our mothers conceived us father have mercy upon us this morning let the blood of jesus wash us behold you desire truth in the inward parts in the hidden part of my heart you will make me to know wisdom you will make me to know your truth. Purge me with the blood of Jesus and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Wash my bloodlines. Wash Lord my bloodlines from my father's side, my mother's side. Wash my bloodlines from my spouse's father's side, from his mother's side. Wash every bloodline that my children and myself are connected to. Every bloodline that we are connected to. Wash us by the blood of Jesus. Wash us this morning uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, cleanse us uh, of every form of unrighteousness uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray again this morning, brethren. We want to ask God that Father God, any evil covenant, any evil dedications, any evil initiations, and any evil trade agreements that have been entered into from my bloodlines, from my father's side, my mother's side. If you're married, from your spouse's father's side, their mother's side. If you have children, every every bloodline that your children are connected to, you're going to plead the blood and say, Lord, by the blood of Jesus, as you are washing me this morning, let evil covenants be broken. Let evil dedications be nullified. Let evil initiations be revoked uh, and let every evil trade agreement be broken by the blood of Jesus. Uh, by the blood. Uh, break every evil covenant. Uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, break the evil dedications. Uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, break the initiations of wickedness. Uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, break the trade agreements. Break them by the blood 
blood of Jesus. Break them by the blood of Jesus. Break them by the blood of Jesus. Break, oh God, by the blood. Every evil covenant, every evil dedication be broken. Every evil initiation be broken. Every evil trade be broken by the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus perfect us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, let the power of the blood uh, revoke the initiation, revoke the dedications uh, in my bloodlines, uh, revoke the trade agreement, uh, break the evil covenant by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name. Amen. Elisha spoke to Gehazi in 2 Kings chapter 5. And he said, is it a proper time to accept money and clothing and olive orchards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and male and female servants? What have you done? That simple act of accepting that money and those clothes. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. Accepting the money, accepting the clothes, triggered triggered a clause that changed Gehazi's destiny and the destiny of his descendants forever. Gehazi was supposed to be a prophet. If Elisha was carrying a double portion of the anointing of Elijah, Gehazi was supposed to carry multiplied by four the anointing of Elijah, but by simply accepting the money of Naaman and accepting the clothes, he he switched his destiny and the destiny of his descendants. If Gehazi was an anointed prophet carrying the anointing of Elijah multiplied by four, imagine how powerful his descendants were supposed to be. I want us to pray this morning and plead the blood of Jesus. You're not going to start with yourself. I want you to start with your lineage from your ancestors, wherever a switch was made that changed the trajectory of the bloodline, where today you are supposed to be up, 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 up in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are supposed to be in a different place. But years ago, decades ago, hundreds of years ago, one decision by your ancestors changed the trajectory. I want us to pray and ask the blood of Jesus to locate the roots of our bloodlines, locate the roots of our bloodlines, wherever anything went wrong amongst my ancestors. Lord, let the blood of Jesus heal wherever our DNA was changed for wickedness. Wherever our DNA was changed for wickedness, we are pleading the blood of Jesus. Lord, locate the seed of my ancestors. Locate, oh God, that day in my ancestral line when things began to go wrong. Lord, locate it because you are the Lord God who is eternal. You are El Olam, the everlasting God. You dwell outside time. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are able to visit my pastor. Wherever any of my ancestors behaved like Gehazi and there was a switch and there was a switch and our destiny was swapped. I am pleading the blood of Jesus over that era of my ancestors, over that era of the past. I am pleading the blood of Jesus. Ragadoso bregetelebosia, mazuketeleba rogodosia, mazokodorobo shatalabasia, maligadoso bregetelebosia, maroko koko borogodosia, mazeke de de bregetelebosia, masutenderebasia, in the mighty name of Jesus masoko torobo shaya ligado so pregede yaba ikaluvra doso kodobo in the name of Jesus father i plead the blood of Jesus on that entry point where the switch happened where the switch took place i plead the blood of Jesus on that entry point where my ancestors like Gehazi were fooled into thinking they were receiving a blessing but instead they received a curse that is speaking to descendants lord i plead the blood of Jesus 
I plead the blood of Jesus uh, upon that point uh, of the switch uh, and I pray uh, let the blood uh, let the blood uh, revoke the switch uh, let the blood revoke the switch uh, let the blood revoke the switch blood of Jesus revoke the switch uh, blood of Jesus be applied to the error of my ancestors uh, be applied to the errors uh, of my, 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 my progenitors uh, be applied to the errors uh, from my father's side my mother's side uh, my spouse's father's side their mother's side uh, every bloodline my children are connected to I am pleading the blood uh, let the error be revoked uh, in the mighty name of Jesus regados of regete lebosia mazuke de de bragadosia mazuke de bradosia mazikan tolo bradosia in the mighty name of Jesus Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Leprosy. Leprosy is a representation of, of, of sin and iniquity that destroys. Leprosy in the Bible is a representative of sin and iniquity that destroys. That's why it is the blood of Jesus. The Bible teaches us that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from that leprosy. When you think about sin that leads you to hell, it's like leprosy. It's this incurable, debilitating illness that begins to eat a person away, eat and eat at them, destroy their destiny, destroy who they are until it lands them in, in hell. It is a symbol of that debilitating iniquity that lands people in hell. It is wired into DNA, wired into the cellular structure of the person, and it causes them to find that it, they can't help themselves. They just behave in a certain way. They're like, I can't help it. They talk too much. They get angry. They behave anyhow because they can't help it because it's wired into their DNA. Something is leading them to talk too much. Something is leading them to just be angry. Something is leading them to just always behave in the wrong way. We are going to pray this morning. The Bible said, that leprosy was clinging to Gehazi and his descendants forever. We're going to speak to God, God of mercy, grace, and compassion. The Bible said in that um, Psalm 51 that we were using to pray, it says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to your tender mercies and the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgression. Our God has loving kindness. He has tender mercy and he has compassion. We're going to ask him to rewire our DNA. The DNA of our children and our children's children. Anything wired into our DNA for failure. Wired into our DNA for mistakes. For behaving in the wrong way. Let the blood of Jesus deprogram the program. Let the blood of Jesus deprogram the program. Any evil program that has been wired into our DNA. So that we are passing it on to the next generation. And the next generation. Lord deprogram the evil program. In the mighty name of Jesus deprogram the evil program. Every evil program. Let the evil programs be de de deprogrammed in the name of Jesus. Lord I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Oh, Rabababa Sekereka Sukatalabasia. Rebrado Sokondo Loboshia. Zeketele Barugadosia. Mareketele Gadosia and Dalaba. I deprogram the evil program in the mighty name of Jesus. Masekele Ketelebasia. Every evil program that has been wired into our DNA, we deprogram the evil program. Every program that replaces uh, programs of failure, programs of of errors, uh, programs uh, of sinful lifestyles, uh, programs uh, of limitation, uh, programs uh, that lead people to hell. Lord, we deprogram the program by the blood of Jesus, uh, by the mercy of God. Uh, let the program be deprogrammed uh, by the mercy of God. Uh, let the evil program be deprogrammed. Uh, mercy of God. Uh, mercy, 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 mercy. Rabusa vragadoso vregede. Masuken telebradosia. Let the mercy of God uh, deprogram uh, every Every leprosy in my DNA, every iniquity in my DNA, let the blood of Jesus deprogram it, deprogram it over my children, over my sons, over my daughters, over my children's children. Lord, deprogram every leprosy, deprogram it from my husband, deprogram it from myself, deprogram it from our bloodlines, every bloodline that we are connected to by birth, by marriage, by childbirth, let the programs of iniquity be deprogrammed. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Father, we thank you. We worship you. We honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Again, leprosy is symbolic of a curse. Is symbolic of a curse. And you see a curse is like once there is a curse, it means that no matter where you go, no matter where you live on planet earth, that curse it will be activated. If, if you move from Africa to Australia, the curse will follow because it's a spiritual program. It's like you have a laptop, you have a computer or a MacBook or whatever else. Inside that iPad or MacBook or computer, there are programs that have been written by Apple or by Microsoft. And wherever you take your laptop to, because the program has already been written, the laptop will work according to the program. The Microsoft one will work according to Microsoft. The Apple device you are using will work according to Apple. If you take it to Iceland, it will still work like that. You take it to Zimbabwe, it will work like that. Wherever you go, that program has been written and that program will work. So a curse is just like that. It's, it's a program that has been written in the realm of the spirit. And because it's been written, wherever you go, that curse will become a limiting factor in the direction of the curse. For example, some families, there is a curse that they must never amount to anything. Even when they have opportunities, you give them the opportunity that if you gave somebody else, they will excel greatly. You give them that opportunity. Nothing happens to them. It, 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 it goes nowhere. Yesterday, I was praying with my sisters and we were tracing a certain family. When we looked at their father who has died now, that man, whenever he would get paid, he would go straight to what is called the bear garden in Africa. There's a bear garden. He will spend all the wage at the bear garden, go home empty handed with nothing. And when he gets home, his wife would say something over him. There is a language in Zimbabwe called Shona. And she would say to him, you know, you are a rombe, rombe, useless, worthless. You're going to amount to nothing. The wife shouting at him after he's got drunk. And then this man will be more useless. The next money he borrows from the club, he will go to the betting place where, you know, where there's horse racing. He will go and bet on the horses. And of course he will lose. That's how he lived his life until he died from cirrhosis of the liver. His firstborn son, that one as I'm talking right now, has also amounted to nothing. He's exactly just like his dad. And then the children of that firstborn son, they are just like that as well. They have not amounted to anything. The girls just get pregnant out of wedlock. They have no money. They have nothing. They are always harassing relatives, asking for money. That is the trajectory of a curse. It says, even when you have opportunity, that father had a good job. He worked in a good office, but he amounted to nothing. The people he worked with in that office, they built houses. They had lands. They had great things. Their children did great. Their children's children are doing great. A curse will cause you to keep failing because the program has been written. And that's just one example. Some people, money they have, but the curse is on their marriages. He says, even if they marry, it must fail. Even if they marry, they are going to fail in the marriage. That is a curse. I want you to pray this morning. Are you with me, child of God? Proverbs 26 verse 2. Proverbs 26 verse 2. I'm reading it in the New Living Translation. Like a flattering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse will not land on its intended victim. In other words, if you have closed every door, even if they wrote the program in 1693 against your bloodline, if you close the door, that program will not work anymore for you because the curse cannot land on you. So I want you to pray this morning. We have repented. We have broken covenants, trades, dedications, and initiations. But I want us to pray once again and say, Lord, any curse that is operating in my life, in my bloodline, in my family, I repent of whatever is the cause, whatever opened the door for this curse. 
I repent of that cause, oh God. Whatever is causing this curse to continue in my family, in my bloodline, Every curse, O oh God, of unfruitfulness, every curse of laboring in vain, every curse of broken marriages, every curse of divorce, every curse of misery, every curse of disease and, 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 and life-limiting diagnosis, every curse of hypertension, every curse of strokes, every curse of ca- cancer, whatever is the curse, curse of, 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 of asthma, every curse, Lord, of reproductive problems, Every curse, oh God, of, of, of growing cysts and whatever in the ovaries. Every curse that brings, oh God, any form of sickness or disease. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus and repent of the cause. Let the blood of Jesus close the door to this curse in the mighty name of Jesus. Curse of growing fibroids in the uterus. Father, let the blood of Jesus Break the cause, break the cause and close the door. Whatever opened the door to this curse, Lord, let the door be closed. Let the door be closed. Let the door be closed. Whatever is the cause that allows this curse to function in my life, in the lives of my children, in the life of my spouse, in the life of my bloodline family members. Father, I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, this morning, I pray that you will remind your children, bring to remembrance any curse that is functioning in their lives uh, let them locate it uh, whatever is that invisible hand uh, that causes them to be frustrated uh, Lord reveal the curse uh, curses uh, curses uh, of, 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 of drought uh, curses of drought uh, curses uh, that eat the harvest uh, that when the time for harvest has come uh, the, the locusts come in and they eat the harvest uh, let that curse be broken by the blood uh, let that curse be broken by the blood of Jesus any curse of near success syndrome that says at the edge of the breakthrough you must fail let the curse of near success syndrome be broken let the curse of the near success syndrome be broken in the mighty name of Jesus any curse that says you will grow and then at that point of being very great you will be cut down and go back to zero Lord we break that curse we break that curse that cuts people down and sends them back to zero we we break it by the blood blood of Jesus. Break that curse. Blood of Jesus. Any curse. Curses of premature death. Any curse that says anyone will die before their time. Let that curse be broken. Let that curse be broken. Let that curse be broken by the blood of Jesus. Lord, break the curse. Break the curse. Any curses uh, that bring sexual sin, sexual sin, adultery, fornication, sexual perversion, uh, any perversion of any type, uh, let the curse be broken. Let the curse be broken. Let the curse be broken. Let the curse be broken by the blood of Jesus. Lord, break the curse, break the curse, break the curse. Father, Lord, any curse that destroys what your children worked hard for, let the curse be broken, let the curse be broken. Break the curse, Lord, break the curse. Any curse, Lord, that is destroying their labor, Lord, break the curse. Ikalu Mazuka dura bashanda la bosia, mazoko toria ba 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 ba. Any curse that is wasting their resources, Lord, break the curse. Whatever scatters resources, destroys resources. Father, break the curse. Break the curse. Let the curse be broken. Let the curse be broken. Let the curse be broken. Mazoko ndoro bosha kabale gadosia, mazoko dodo breke tele ba 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 ba, mazuke tele borogo dosia, mazeke le basia. In the name of Jesus, Father God, any curse, any curse that brings mental illness, mental disorder, confusion, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, let the curse be broken, let the curse be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, you know, brethren, what is coming to my mind? is that we should repent for any witchcraft that has been practiced in our families that anyone in our families who practiced witchcraft or is still practicing it and is opening the door to curses father we repent of every witchcraft that has been practiced in our families by the blood of Jesus we close the door we close the door to curses coming from the occultic realm every curse coming from the occultic realm we close the 
door by the blood of Jesus as we repent of any witchcraft that has been done in our families. In the mighty name of Jesus, we close the door. We close the door. We close the door. We close the door to witchcraft. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus name. Father mercy to triumph over judgment. Doors that have been opened by anyone in our families. Who has been practicing divination. Practicing sorcery. Practicing fortune telling. Practicing oh God. Um, any spells. Uh, Lord casting spells. Uh, anyone who has been meeting over a witchcraft cauldron. Lord we plead the blood. Uh, and we break the curses emanating from their activities. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father anyone who has been calling up the spells. Spirits of the dead uh, in our families. Uh, anyone calling up, oh God, uh, the spirits of the dead. Uh, anyone practicing necromancy. Any necromancers in our families, oh God. Uh, any spirit mediums uh, in our families, oh God. Uh, we repent of it uh, and we plead the blood. Uh, we close that door. We close that door. We close that door. By the blood of Jesus, we close that door. By the blood of Jesus, we close that door. By the blood of Jesus, we close that door. Close that door. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let the door be closed in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray again. You know, in the book of Ruth, in the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 1, you know, the Bible tells us that we are ensnared by the words of our mouth. In Ruth chapter 1, we see Elimelech and his wife Naomi. They had two sons and they named the sons Malon and Chilion, meaning invalid, sickly. Malon means invalid, sickly, sickly. And Chilion, it means wasting away, pining, pining and wasting away. This is the name they gave those boys. And of course, those boys died before their time. Because if every time people are calling you, they are shouting, Invalids, come here, please. Invalid, come and have your breakfast. Wasting. Go and pick that soap for me and bring it here. You know. Of course, you're going to waste away. We want to pray that Lord, any way that we have been ensnared by the words of our mouth or the words of our parents' mouth, the words of my father, the words of my mother, the words of my grandmother, my grandfather, the words of our teachers, people in positions of authority when we were in school, whatever name they've been calling you, the names of your teachers. Sorry, the names your teachers had been calling you or people in positions of authority like pastors and bishops. What names are they calling you? You know, if you have been ensnared by those words, we are going to plead the blood of Jesus. I'll give you an example. When I was younger, you know, um, when I, I, I was like 18, you know, in fact, when from being 16, something that didn't happen in Africa a lot, but I always got jobs, good jobs. Even from 16, when I was 16, I got a job that paid me more than the salary of my mom who was working in the bank at the time for that month, you know, working in the trade fair in Zimbabwe. Then we used to have something called the trade fair and you have exhibitors from all over the world. I used to get jobs, you know, and then my parents would be bothered about my, the money I've been paid because, you know, in Africa, they want to take all the money, but I had plans for my money. So I'd budget my own money. So my mom and dad began to nickname me Spender. They called me Spender. Spender. She's always spending. And, you know, she's only happy when she's got plenty of money and is spending. And I'd look at it and think, do you know what? I'm not a spender. I'm a very sensible person. I'm not a fashion person. I don't buy clothes because it's fashionable. I buy something because I need it. But they called me Spender. And after a while, I noticed that the name is growing. You know, I found that even children who were born after I was already 16, they, they knew the name. When they meet me in my 30s, they'll be like, Spender. And I said, Who call it? who's calling me Spender? I reject that name. 
in the name of Jesus because it's not a good name. I refuse it. So there may be names that sound like they are endearing nicknames. But if that endearing nickname is not carrying with it a prophecy of God, a prophecy of goodness, it becomes a curse. So I want us to cancel any name that your parents gave you that is not consistent with the word of God. Any names your relatives, your teachers, your pastors gave you, you're going to cancel it by the blood of Jesus and say, I refuse to be ensnared by the words of the mouth of these people who have authority over me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I refuse it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, any name they've given me that has become a curse, I refuse it and I nullify it. I reject it. Lord, just like I refuse the name spender, I refuse any name that is not consistent with the glory of God. Any name, whatever they've called me, Lord, that is not consistent with your will, I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Whatever my father, my mother, my grandparents, my, my uncles, my aunties, whatever name they they called me that is not consistent with the word of God. I reject it. I refuse it. I nullify it. I renounce it. I reject it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. We nullify any name that has become a curse. Any name that has become a limiting factor over ourselves, uh, our spouses, our children, our children's children. Any name uh, that has become a limiting factor that is acting like a curse, uh, we cancel it uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, I cancel every name uh, that has become a curse. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for canceling and nullifying any name that is not of us. We use the authority Jesus gave us in Luke 10, 19 to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall harm us. We refuse these names. We refuse these curses. Whatever they've called us, Lord, we renounce it and we reject it. In Jesus' mighty name, let's cancel any names we've given ourselves or given our children or that our spouses or the people around us. I told you about the woman who called her husband a rombe, useless man. He became useless. Whatever names we've called our spouses, our children, ourselves, we cancel those names. Uh, lift up your voice and cancel by the blood of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we cancel uh, any name uh, that I've called myself uh, that is not consistent with your glory. I cancel it. Uh, any name I've called my husband that is not consistent with your glory i cancel it in the name of jesus any names i've called my children my children's children that is not consistent with the glory of god i cancel by the blood i repent oh god uh, of saying these names uh, i repent of talking without thinking uh, i repent of talking without wisdom i repent of talking impulsively i repent of talking emotionally i repent by the blood uh, and i nullify those names uh, i nullify uh, lord where i've been ensnared uh, by the words of of my mouth. Uh, I repent of it. Uh, I repent, oh God, uh, where I've been ensnared uh, by the words of my mouth. Uh, I repent, Lord. Uh, I repent uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I repent, oh God. Uh, I repent. Uh, I repent of it. Uh, I repent of it uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, Lord, deliver us. Uh, deliver us, oh God. Uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, let every strange name I've called myself be cancelled henceforth. In the name of Jesus, uh, every strange name I've called my spouse, my children, be cancelled by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I also want us to use the names of Malon and Chilion to cancel any curse along those lines. Imagine Malon, the curse of becoming an invalid. We're going to cancel it in all our families. You know what? You're going to live to a good old age. When it is time to be translated to heaven, you will not go as an invalid, bedridden. You know, invalids are bedridden. They are bedridden. They can't move. They can't move their leg. They can't move their hands. That is not our portion. We're going to cancel any curse that would want to bring any one of us to the position of an invalid. We revoke it and nullify it by the blood of Jesus. We 
we decree and declare none of us will be sick to the point of being bedridden. Anyone connected to this prayer line, all our brothers and sisters in Christ, all our prayer partners, all our brothers and sisters, our siblings in our families, their children, their children's children, our cousins, our relatives, everyone in my bloodline, I cancel the curse of the invalid. I cancel the curse of the invalid. None of us will die bedridden. None of us will become invalid. None of us will be bedridden. In the name of Jesus, with long life will God satisfy us and show us his salvation. And when it is time for us to go to heaven in our good old age, we will be translated in health. We will be translated in health. We will never become invalid. In the mighty name of Jesus, we reject the curse of the invalid. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Then I want us to cancel the curse that was upon Chilion in case devil thinks he can give it to any one of us. The curse of wasting, wasting away, pining. You know, the person who is wasting, the Bible says the path of the just is like the shining light, which shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. But Chilion doesn't shine brighter and brighter. Chilion is getting worse every day. They are wasting away. The things that are supposed to be accumulating in their life and being a blessing, resources are draining. Everything is wasting. We're going to come Cancel that case that brings wasting and pining. Anything that causes a person to be sad. Every day they are pining. Every day they are moaning and crying and groaning and grumbling. We cancel that curse. In the name of Jesus, it's not our portion. We are never going to be wasting away. Our bloodlines will not waste away. Our spouses, our children, our children's children. None of us will waste away. We will not diminish in strength. We are going higher and higher. The Bible says, as your days, so shall your strength be. We are getting stronger every day. Every day I wake up I am stronger than I was yesterday. As my days, so shall my strength be. I refuse the curse of wasting. I refuse the curse of pining. Every day is full of joy. Every day is better than yesterday. In the name of Jesus, because I am a child of God and the path of the just is like a shining light, shining brighter and brighter until I enter glory. We cancel every curse of wasting every case of pining our days are full of joy our days are full of glory they are full of peace in the name of Jesus the joy of the Lord is our strength the joy of the Lord is with us the glory of God is around us the presence of God is with us in the name of Jesus we are moving higher higher and higher by the power of God we are greater and greater by the power of God from glory to glory by the spirit of the Lord in the name of Jesus our best day are today and tomorrow. Our best days are not yesterday. Every day is better than the last to the glory of his name in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you. Oh Lord, we bless you. Oh Lord, we honor you. Oh Lord, we exalt you. Oh Lord, we reverence you. We thank you, Lord. May your blessing be upon us on this altar, Lord. May your blessing be upon everyone who will listen to the recording. May your blessing be upon everyone who will key into this prayer and who is listening to the recording. May your blessing be upon them uh, to revoke and nullify uh, every curse, uh, every invisible hand uh, that had been working against us up to this point. Uh, we declare them broken. We declare them cancelled. Uh, we declare them revoked uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, whatever is the name of that curse, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we declare them revoked, nullified, obliterated and cancelled. Uh, for Christ uh, has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, uh, according to Galatians 3.13 and 14, uh, so that uh, the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles. Uh, this morning, we receive the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is, is come upon us. Uh, we receive the promise of the Spirit uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we are blessed and highly favored uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it. In the name of Jesus, I speak the blessing of the Lord over each and every one of us. The blessing of the Lord over our families, uh, over our bloodlines. Uh, we have been made richer and there is no sorrow attached to it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen.